Welcome to The Quantum Healer. My name is Dr. Tracy Allshafer, and I'm here to talk to my good friend, Rose Ford, who is the owner of the Massage Garden in Hamilton, New Jersey. So, Rose, you and I go back quite a bit. Um, I'd say 15 to 20 years. Yeah. We both started at Full Circle. Right. Yeah. Full Circle was a, a beautiful uh, massage, a family massage center in East Windsor, uh, owned by Darby Lines for, I don't even know how long she had it, but a lot of us got our start there yeah. in massage therapy. And, um, it was just a, a really beautiful place to, um, really learn hand, you know, yes. learn your skills, learn what you were interested in kind of focusing on. Mm -hmm. Um, my massage school, taught us a very integrated approach. Um, so we were, we were given lots of little skills and then it was like, how do you work with them and fit them into the massage and, and make it your own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, uh, you probably have a similar story. Um, do you want to tell everybody how you got into massage therapy, where you went to school and what brought you here to owning this place? Sure. Um, so I had never had a massage. I thought, Massage was something rich people did on cruises. And I decided for my 32nd birthday that I was going to get a massage for my birthday. And my now brother-in-law was the only person I knew who got massage. So I went to the woman he saw and I couldn't believe how different I felt after the first session. And I was the person in my family who would rub somebody's back or their feet or that type of thing and I thought wow people get paid for this <laughs> and I had a friend who was in massage school at the time and she asked me about it and I said well where do you go to learn this and within two weeks I was enrolled at that school which this is long before licensing was mandatory um, it was a hundred hour program and it that school's no longer around. Sadly, many of the schools that we all went to are no longer around. Yeah. Um, so I started working in the field part-time at a chiropractor's office. And um, about five months after that, I was laid off from my full-time job. I had six months of unemployment and thought, let me give this a go. And here I am. <laughs> in the interim, I went back to school to get a full 500-hour mm. certificate. Um, and then over the years have taken many, many continuing hours of education for learning new things and fulfilling licensing requirements. And yes, that's how I'm here. <laughs> is that how you found cupping? Was it? That is. Oh, okay. Um, I was taking a class for something completely different, but the instructor had incorporated cupping into her sessions and uh, she demoed for all of us in the class and told us where to buy them. And that was these um, silicone cups that are mm -hmm. um, mobile. And I came back from her class and ordered the set and the DVD and started practicing. And people responded really well to it. But I'm a very visual person. If I don't have them out and looking at them, I kind of forget. So I would go through spurts where I would use them and not use them, use them and not use them. And then um, cupping gained attention at the Olympics when people would see the swimmers with these funny red marks on their backs oh. and their chests, like Michael Phelps. Okay. Um, and it, you started seeing cupping classes popping up all over the place. So I took um, two more classes at the School of Body Therapies and learned the static method of cupping with suction and pumps. and. I've been using it and people come back and they say that really helped and can you do that again? So mm. it's something that I'm offering within a session when it's appropriate. So cupping is an ancient practice. Mm -hmm. It goes back, I think, to Asia very, yeah. very long time, thousands of years ago. Um, but it's been, as you mentioned, brought back in a big way and now there's kind of a modern take to it mm -hmm. so um what exactly does it do can you explain that it helps bring blood to the surface um and helps oxygenate and uh tissue so 
If there's a stagnant area or a stuck area, it helps separate the layers of tissue so blood can come in. When you have blood, your red blood cells carry oxygen. So, and it's the same idea as massage, that you're promoting movement within your tissue, bringing fresh oxygenated healing blood in, removing waste products from the tissue. But massage is downward pressure, cupping is upward pressure. Mm. So it's the kind of the opposite and it doesn't fatigue the muscle the way a deep tissue massage would. So athletes are able to utilize it during a competition, whereas you would never do a deep tissue massage the day before a marathon, say, right. or not the day after either because the person would be too sore. Right. But you can do this half an hour before an Olympic swimming event and they'll wow. have benefit without m muscle fatigue. So um, when people, you know, come, come in and they say, uh, I have this thing back here and then, I don't know, it's sore, it hurts, and you feel into the tissue and you can feel that there's, it's bunched up, it's mm -hmm. um, unhappy, there's a knot, all these things, all these terms that we use, would that be a, like you might put a cup at that juncture yes. while you're working something else? Yes, if, um, if, if they're agreeable to it and they know that there you know, could be discoloration. Um, so yes, if I find a stuck spot as you said, or not, yeah. that would be a prime area for uh, a cup to be placed. Yeah. And what do you feel, do you feel like an immediate change in the tissue after cupping or? Not always. Sometimes you'll, it'll start to soften. Generally, nothing is a hundred percent immediately, even right. with massage, but, um, you'll cup and then afterwards go back and massage the tissue again. And mm -hmm. it generally will feel a little less stuck or a little less restricted. Right. I know I have um, a lot of issues with this um, rotator cuff injury that I had. And I could feel, I mean, that, you know your body when, you, when you're a body worker mm -hmm. or a yoga teacher. You just, you're very in tune. So I knew immediately... Uh, every muscle that went into the shoulder just kind of locked down and, and, and guarded. And um, the first thing I wanted to do, um, or, or had my husband do, because I couldn't even use this arm, was just massage. But I felt like something just needed to get in there and break mm -hmm. up all that tissue. Uh, and it actually was so painful, it took me a while to be able to do um, certain techniques, but then you did some cupping, mm -hmm. and even even uh, some of the stuff I couldn't take, right. some in there, uh, but I think you got one in right here, right about there. Yeah, we had, we, we managed one, not too intensely. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little yelp. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little scream on my part, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, and, and I guess that, you know, in my brain too, when I was looking at the cups and you, and you asked me if I would be open to cupping, I'm wondering, is it going to hurt? Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thing to say is depending on the nature of the tissue or whatever, um, it can be a little uncomfortable. Yes. Um, generally not painful. Right. Um, there's, you know, an awareness I would say, um, because you have pulling on your skin um, and everyone's pain threshold is different and people's pain level tolerance levels are different from day to day, depending on where yeah. their body is. Um, I like to, you know, compare my analogy for pressure is like spicy. So for some people, black pepper is way too much and yeah. for others, scotch habaneros are never enough. Uh, it's the same thing with pressure. Some people you can stand on them and they'll say you can go deeper and other people you just lay your hand on and they're like, oh, you're going to have to back off. So there's a wide spectrum of, of I love, tolerance. I love that analogy. <laughs> Thanks. But you also have the people that think they're the habanero people, but they're really, really the, the pepper, pepper people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes that's me. <laughs> and I'll say, go for it. And then I'll go, wait. Um, but my, um, my physical therapist actually mentioned cupping to me right before I came to you for it. And he said, he's all about cupping. He really, um, approves of it. And, um, I think the other day he did use, um, may I touch it? Sure. 
something like this because his looked a little different. It was mm -hmm. smaller. All different and, kinds. Yeah, it didn't have like the two ridges. It was like just like um, almost like a thimble looking thing. Mm -hmm. And then he he ran it around a little bit and he used it. And um, um, I just I really think that it helps. It helps. It has, it has helped me a lot. Okay, great. I really do believe that um, that. Like you said, the pulling rather than the pushing because the pushing was too intense. Mm -hmm. And even though the pulling was a little intense in the joint socket where where I have the tears, all around it released a little bit. It released, and then when that released, and the pet, you know, all the other muscles release. Now I've got more release in the joint capsule. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely helped me, um, and I've only had it a couple times, which is fantastic everybody's going to be different, I guess, yes. is what we're saying with how they're going to experience the cupping, but the benefits are really, I think, good and, you know, major physical therapy place that I go to is also using it. Mm -hmm. So you have, I guess, medical doctors or physical therapists using this methodology mm -hmm. as well as probably acupuncturists, I think, yeah. have been using it for a really long time. And um, do they also use it with heat? Yes. Oh, okay. That's out of our scope of practice. Right. Um, so I don't use heat. Generally, the heated ones are glass. Um, they're mm -hmm. less portable, obviously more prone to breakage. So right. um, not something... It, within the realm of massage therapy. Okay, but yeah, so there's also different types of cupping then, yes. I guess we should say too. So we have the silicone cups. Um, are these glass? They're plastic. Okay, so the, the plastic ones that mm -hmm. you use, our massage therapist would use, mm -hmm. and then there's the glass ones that an acupuncturist would use potentially with heat as well. Yes. So lots of different types of cupping. I'm curious though, you know, as with any modality, there might be some contraindications or, you know, certain people or situations where you can't or should not use yes. cupping, and mm -hmm. that might be important for people to know. Um, so anyone on a blood thinner, um, anyone with a clotting disorder, um, not on pregnant women, not on any type of open wound or sore or break in the skin, um, if you have a fresh tattoo, um, at least two months after the completion of the tattoo, it can pull the ink. Um, oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Not on, um, directly on a bone or a joint. So aside from around the scapula and the sacrum, so shoulder blade and lower back. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't do say like, uh, a knuckle, let's say. Mm -hmm. So it's for soft tissue, right. not skeletal tissue. Um, there's some autoimmune disorders that are contraindicated. Um, so generally things with you know, skin and clotting, um, okay. that type of thing. Explain to me the different sizes and you know, like obviously this one's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This one looks like a medium size. Where... Uh, so these I have in like three or four different sizes. Uh, so if I wanted to do, say, someone with small arms, this would probably be a little too big. You want it to be able to obviously be lubricated first, but um, stick to the surface. And again, like you wouldn't put um, a big giant cup, say, here. It's going to fall off. It has to adhere to all the skin. And... Um, the tops of the shoulders, so something smaller, okay. something bigger is generally going to fall off if it's there. Um, so, so just for different body parts, different body parts, and yeah, more specific. You know, if if there's a, say in the rhomboid, one of those stubborn trigger points, yeah. I would use something smaller on that rather than bigger. So would uh, the smaller one on something like that kind of just more precisely yes. hit the spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were telling me you have these facial cups too. Yes. So what is that? What did, where, how do you use those? <laughs> these you can use uh, to help stimulate collagen pr production in the skin wow. um, or to minimize fine lines. So, you know, everybody has that, well, everybody over 40, let's say, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, your 11s here. Um, and then 
for to cross the top of the forehead. Wow. Uh, or if, um, I have a client who has TMJ, and ah. she comes in and gets just upper body, head, neck, face, and I incorporate cupping into lightly into her face, and it helps relax her and her muscles. Wow, that's fairly cool. Um, wow, are there any other applications of cupping that we didn't touch on? Um, some people offer like a cellulite reduction, but you have to use very mm. special and they're generally prohibitively expensive oils, uh, often oh. with caffeine in them. Okay. Um, and, and you have to do it pretty regularly to have okay. ongoing benefit, but. Uh, yeah, but I could see where that would definitely um, assist with mm -hmm. that situation too. So I'm sure that there's other people out there that offer that kind of cupping. Um, would it be like, um, Probably like a meta spa type yeah. of place. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about someone you've seen, like maybe the biggest benefit of this. Do you have a particular client that... Uh, yeah, I have a client who um, has a very intense finance job and then in his off time does Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu oh. and I don't know what else, but a lot of aggressive... Um, uh, martial arts and yeah. he ended up with a frozen shoulder and his range of motion was really diminished and uh, I suggested we try cupping on it after a few sessions and he said sure why not and we did so the next time he came back I said how did the cupping work out and he's like I ordered my own set I've been doing it myself at home I'm 80 percent better whoa <laughs> So, like, well, it's got to... So is it easy enough to use on yourself, like even the plastic ones, or would you have to stick to a silicone? You can use the plastic ones. I've done it to myself. I wouldn't say it's easy. Um, I guess it depends on where you have to put it. Exactly, yeah. Because it has, like, a pump mm -hmm. to it, which you'll see when we when we do the, um, the session. Yeah, so, you know, reaching back and <laughs> pumping and putting the oil on and holding it. So it's easier if you have someone to help you. But yeah. uh, lower back, you can definitely do yourself. Um, mm. If you can get your hand around the low back. Yeah. 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 Because like frozen shoulder, I can't get that arm around there yet. So. But, um, well, I know that they've helped me. I really feel like, you know, this is another one of these ancient practices that's still here mm -hmm. um, for a reason. And some people have put a modern, maybe, you know, product right. together so that it's a little bit easier than however they used to do it, you know, back in the day. Um, and to me, anytime we have a practice that is known to have worked for that long, there's and there's got to be something to it, right? There's something to yoga, it. acupuncture, cupping. So what is the solution that you use? I usually use jojoba oil. Um, I also have CBD oil. Um, so n nothing, you know, super heavy. Uh, enough to get some glide and for them to adhere. Regular massage lotion doesn't work. You can use gel or oil generally. No, that's for the silicone ones because they glide. Oh, so you use that on the plastic ones yes. too. Now, these you kind of glide, mm -hmm. but these are static. They Correct. stay in one spot. Right. And how long do they stay on? Anywhere from four to they say the upper limit is 15 minutes. I generally don't go that long. So generally for me, four to 10 minutes, depending okay. on um, how quickly people discolor. So if they start okay. to turn like purple right away, you know the area is really inflamed. Um, and how and their tolerance level sometimes like like you experience like whoa that, that's too much I got to yeah, back off yeah so okay yeah and I think I had a very minimal in fact it wasn't a full circle it was like a partial circle or maybe it was a, a little bit but it went away in a couple of days it wasn't really anything major but I have seen um you know those kind of big thick yeah. red Polka dots. <laughs> yeah, dots all over the place. But it, again, that just depends on how badly the tissue is adhered and mm -hmm. how long you leave it on, how much suction you put on. So if you 
just do lightly like we did with you because you were in kind of like a crisis situation. Yeah. It, you're not going to get a whole lot of discoloration, but if you yeah. make it, you know, much more um, pressure, reverse pressure, you're going to have more discoloration. Right, right. Well, are you ready to give it a try on me so we can do a little recording? Sure. So this will be so you can actually see what a little bit of a cupping, um, not a whole treatment would be, but, you know, get an idea of, of what happens sure. as, as she's working with the tissue and applying it. And, and I'll then. let you know um, how I feel after. Okay. Right now, it's, you know, it's just my, I would say my, it's stiff. Mm -hmm. um, I feel stiff today. And um, yesterday we did in PT my first strength training oh. on the arm. So stiffness comes with the territory yeah. with that, you know, where I'm at right now. So, uh, yeah, I would say everything's just feeling pretty stiff today. Okay. But pain, not so much, but okay. So here we go, cupping.
Thanks, Rose. You're welcome. How are you feeling? Um, a lot less sore. Good. Yeah, I don't, well, of course, you massaged it a little bit, and then you did the cupping, and I, it doesn't feel as sore as it did. And the cups didn't feel, um, I mean, I felt I felt them, but it, it actually felt good. It's not painful. No, it felt really good. Great. Did I get a lot of redness, or? Not a lot. Um, I didn't go to the maximum level of suction, given the fact that you've been in this kind of crisis state, for lack of a better word, and, yeah. you know, recently, so I'm not going to overstress your body, plus you've been doing all the other modalities, but, it, mm -hmm. I mean, you're pink, but you're not, like, I'm pink, maroon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it feels good. Like I said, the stiffness, uh, I would say it's a little sore right here. Is that where you did the mm -hmm. cup? Yeah, that's about where... It feels a little sore. Okay. So, but, um, but the whole thing, the achiness, and I, it's just, you know, it's also this connective tissue thing because, mm -hmm. uh, everything's connected with soft tissue and everything. But, um, so you work on one thing and then if I had soreness here, even if you worked up there, it does still benefit. Benefit. Yeah. So even when you're working down here and over here, <laughs> it's all part of, yeah. It's all part of that healing process. So I I enjoyed it a lot. And I will show maybe some pictures of the cup spots. Okay. Like if I can get some good ones. But okay, sure. Thank you so much for taking your thank time you. and talking about cupping. And I guess just to close, if somebody wanted to try this technique and they didn't live in New Jersey, mm -hmm. they weren't able to come here, um, where would, is, there, is there a resource? Would you look up acupuncturists or massage therapists that work with cupping, or is there a website for cupping? I cupping? don't know of a website just for cupping, okay. um, but I guess you would just, you know, like anything else, Dr. Google. Um, okay, yeah. Find a, someone in your area that does it, or mm -hmm. uh, look under ABMP, which is one of the massage organizations, AMTA, and they might have a list of practitioners Okay, so so one of the main massage. Um, if you're looking for massage and cupping or acupuncture yeah. and cupping, yeah, and I guess you would just reach out to your local acupuncturist to find out if they do the cupping, or if you have a massage therapist, if it's a modality that they work with, or someone in their place works with, and or a local massage school that offers a class, they would mm. probably know practitioners in right. the area that have taken the class. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're in the New Jersey area, of course, we <laughs> you have this option of working with Rose and her skilled hands. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rose. Great talking with you. You too.